China has been supporting the U.S. and their continual scheme of debt expansion, trading products for IOUs. Eventually, this will change. We can see the rhetoric coming from both sides, speaking in aggressive tones, causing a bit of worry to the markets who rely on this to continue. Stock markets, bond markets, and every other interconnected market depends on the U.S.-China relationship. Inevitably, China will wean itself off of the U.S., the reserve currency status will be lost, and a new world order will be evident. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to get into China buying U.S. real estate and businesses at a record rate. We'll get into China, but first, I would like to cover just some general news about the stock markets. I'm sure you've been following them over recent months and recent years, and right now, they're asking the questions out of the USA Today, Want to see just how much pressure the stock market is under? Got a buck? There are now 359 stocks trading for under $1 a share. Now, most people, they don't really know if that's big or not. But if you look here, that's the highest in more than 20 years. The number of stocks currently trading on a major U.S. exchange for one for less than $1 a share has jumped 38% this year, and it's up 420% from five years ago. We know that this is because of how bad the stock market has been trading. Of course, there are more stocks coming online, but the reason why it's so bad, this bad, the fact that it hasn't been this bad in 20 years, it's because of the performance of the stock market. So this is an interesting thing to look at, and here's a graphical explanation of that. Stocks on major exchanges under $1, beginning in 1996 and ending off in 2016, and you can see the obvious trend that has occurred. This isn't a good thing. This is another indicator showing the weakness of the real economy. All right, let's get into China at this time as we look at the foreign ministry spokeswoman saying this. China and the U.S. as the world's largest developing and developed countries shoulder major responsibilities in safeguarding world peace, stability and security, and driving world development. It's, you know, a little bit of a, you know, looking through the lines here, reading between the lines as you see what they're talking about. Let's get uh, continue on with this. The sustained, sound, and steady growth of the China-U.S. relations serves the fundamental and long-term interests of the two countries and benefits the world. We hope and believe that the U.S. government will pursue a positive policy toward China in a responsible manner. There's different reasons for why they've said this. And this isn't really the first time they've mentioned things like this. And this is a little bit weak compared to what they've said historically. But I do believe that what they're trying to reference here is that should there be some aggression from one side or the other, that's going to make the entire world unstable. Could lead to war. Of course, that's stretching it here. But... Ultimately, that is true. That is the case, that if it gets bad enough, there could be some sort of war. Look at what's happening with Russia. As you see, the proxy wars happening right now. There are proxy wars happening between Russia and the West. Of course, they're not directly fighting, at least not on the outside, but there's a proxy war going on, and that could easily spill out into a full-on war. Let's look at this here. Chinese companies have been buying up foreign businesses, including American ones, at a record rate. And it's freaking lawmakers out. And they get into the fact that General Electric's sale of its appliance business to this Chinese corporation and other companies here basically 
there is cause for concern. Part of that concern is that a lot of these Chinese conglomerates are owned by, in part, by the Chinese government. So when you have the Chinese government owning large swaths of land, owning um, really big businesses, multi-billion dollar businesses, you know, it, it does have a cause for concern for the U.S. government as well as for individuals, big businesses in the U.S. Of course, a lot of corporations are going to sell to the highest bidder, and that's what they do, but the consequences are not really seen in an individual state. You need to really look down the line and figure if you're corporations are being bought up if your land if your real estate's being bought up by a foreign country doesn't matter which country that is you start to lose the political stronghold that you may have had before you need to basically benefit your own country first in many ways and that is not necessarily a bad thing you need to realize that corporations have their best interests in mind and when it's at least your own country's best interest in mind, that means that they can continue to do business, they can continue to make profit, that means the people in who are working for the corporations and who buy the products, it's all interconnected, there's a ripple effect, and that's very important to note. It can't be just looking under a microscope, you need to zoom out, as I like to say. A spate of proposed Chinese takeovers of U.S. companies from the Chicago Stock Exchange to makers of high-end semiconductors has created a vibrant business for small circuit of Washington insiders who advise on how to get cross-border deals approved by the U.S. government. So this is some sort of insider deals, let's call them, that are occurring and it's a little bit scary. Several former U.S. officials have in recent years joined the ranks of lawmakers, consultants, and lobbyists that have emerged as key brokers in trying to get Chinese acquisitions or investment in U.S. companies approved by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, which scrutinizes deals for national security concerns. So basically, it's like no other, or I should say it's like all others, and that is that all you need to do is get your lobbyists or get your alumni from your corporations in the right positions of the government structure and you will be able to pass the laws that you need that are favorable to your corporations welcome to the new world there have been 22 M&A transactions announced in the United States so far in 2016 involving Chinese acquires worth a combined $23 billion, that's according to Reuters. There's a massive increase from 88 deals worth $13 billion for all, all of 2015 and 80, 88 deals for $7 billion in 2014. So already the deals are going off the charts here from China buying up U.S. corporations. If it continues this way, you have to realize the fact that there are some insiders doing business and that could spell a problem for the future. And this is a graphical explanation of that Chinese acquisitions of US companies. The charts begin in 96 up to today. So you're looking at over the past two decades, clearly showing you a trend in both the amount of deals and the actual dollar values of those. So this is really good charts actually to show you that. In my book, I talk about China. In fact, I have a whole chapter on the China-U.S. relationship. And one of the things I said was that China and the Russia have decided to renounce the U.S. dollar resort to using their own currencies. This equates to a huge shift in the flow of credit to the U.S. moving in to the developed world. This doesn't mean that the U.S. dollar can or will lose its currency overnight, its currency reserve status. But that agreement between China and Russia is a big step forward in a global shift of power, a shift of power away from the Titan USA. Just one last thing on China. The China Chinese capital has overtaken the Big Apple. It's home to the most billionaires, 195. 
it's interesting to see the way that there is this shift occurring and it is frightening for the future. How are we ever going to build out of a mess when every statistic is showing us that it can't happen? Even the fake GDP numbers are dismal and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. I'm going to move on here. You can read the articles if you'd like. Now this isn't really necessarily dedicated towards China, but it's important. I covered as often as possible. And this article out of CNBC is talking about Google robot is the end of manual labor. This here is a little bit scary as well, because we can see that Clearly, if you watch the video for yourself, it's interesting to see how far they've come in robotics in only the past few years. Manual labor jobs are jobs that most people don't want. They want jobs that are not necessarily taxing on the body. If you can have a robot wash your dishes, that's a dishwasher, and you can have the washer and dryer take care of your clothing. If you could have your iRobots cleaning your floors, it makes life easier. No one's going to deny that. But at the same time, these are replacing jobs. No longer do you need that manual labor job. That means these individuals that were doing those jobs are not going to have work. So there's two sides to it, obviously. This is just one more. If you'd like to check out the video and see how realistic these robots are getting, you can see it for yourself. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. You can flip through it, head over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the book to see if you like it. Take care.